G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Welcome, everyone. Today, we're breaking from the usual format and speaking with a subject matter expert. I'm interviewing Lachlan Grant, CEO of Vital Edition, an accounting firm specialising in business services tax and outsourced finance function for startups and small and medium-sized enterprises. Thanks for your time today, Lachlan. Thanks, Troy. Great to be here. And you're based in Sydney? We're in Sydney. Yeah, in Sydney, CBD. So. Great. Yeah, haven't been there for a while, but a beautiful city. Yeah, it's a bit tough these days to travel around, but um, no, you should definitely come up when you can. So. And let's start with how we know each other. So the PR firm you use, The Big Smoke, they reached out to see if uh, you'd be good for the audience to come on the cast. And I said, I think it'd be terrific. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've been using Big Smoke for a while and I've been kind of listening to some of your podcasts since we picked that up and the employee show, Edward Mallett interview was very interesting. He's got a great business there. So yeah, it's great to be on. Yeah, Ed was phenomenal coming out from the UK, landing in Sydney mm. 12 or so years ago, I think. Yep. Saw the the employment model kind of consulting, advising in the UK wasn't really done in Australia. And then mm. 12 years later, he's a bit over a thousand employees himself with 27,000 yeah. customers. Just a Super phenomenal impressive. Growth. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell a, <clears throat> sorry, tell us a little bit about your background and experience. Sure. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a chartered accountant. <clears throat> when I started working in business services and tax uh, in Melbourne for a firm called PKF. Um, and I'll do Foster. Sorry? Is it panel yes. per foster? Yeah, yeah correct. Um, hated doing tax. Um, so I got out of that pretty quick. Um, moved to Sydney, took a role in corporate finance in a uh, corporate um, big healthcare pathology business. Uh, did my CA. Um, uh, then I left there and started working in startups. So I always had a passion to work in kind of smaller but growing businesses. So I took a role as CFO of a business called Quotify, which was an online lead generation business. And that was bought by Telstra. Um, it was an interesting transition for to be involved. You know, I was 23, I was calling myself CFO, but essentially I was doing the bookkeeping and after board <laughs> meetings. And that was, yeah. that was a, a great role for, for someone that's, you know, wanted to kind of cut their teeth on small businesses. Um, and then from there, I, I took a role as the kind of 2IC or second person for a startup called Zbox. Um, and that was a UK-based business that was expanding to Australia. And they, they were focused on... Uh, a TV app uh, back, this is 2012, I think it was. And that was when I think the people were ambitious around taking Facebook's audience um, off them. And then the, the idea was that they'd, they'd use this app while watching TV and it didn't quite turn out the way we thought it would. Um, but it's, you know, really great experience kind of seeing that play out, looking at the investment side of things, how to build a team, um, you know, the challenges around that. And that, that was kind of an, an interesting Kind of next step and and from there i started a, my own business which was a cafe retail and coffee roasting business uh, based in sydney we had up to five um, cafes at, at, at one point and, and, and a fairly decent size coffee roasting business and that was um hospitality is a challenging the industry to be in um, brutal we, yeah. we, we certainly kind of did all right we had some wins and some losses we we had a, a, a you know a couple of cafes in the city and one was really good and one we we opened up on on a street called Bridge Street, which was um, kind of Bridge and George Street, and that was just before the light rail construction started. So that was a bit of a nightmare for us. And yep. in in the end, we kind of we we sold that business. I think start of last year, which was very perfect timing for us. But um, that's before yeah, COVID, just, just really, a, just before COVID. Yes, yeah. so that was oh. that was you know good timing in a way, and you know we we, we know that the business is still going strong, and, and that that's encouraging. And um, yeah, for, from there. I, I um I met my kind of business partner. We 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 started Vital Edition, which was a tax and outsource finance um, kind of focused accounting firm, and that's that was kind of a few years ago now, seven years ago, and and we've we've kind of grown that to to where it is today. So. Right, I think it's a really needed service, and so the five boards I sit on, I pretty much handle the finance corner. Uh, one of my degrees is in a majoring, a business degree majoring in accounting, and I worked, you know, three years at Price Waterhouse Cooper straight out of uni. Decided yep. not to do my professional year and get 
become a chartered accountant and uh, late 99 started up to internet companies. So like yourself, from the sounds of it, I had uh, quite an itch to get into running my own businesses. But mm. what right. I've seen in the last 21 years, growing small businesses and working with plenty, um, finance is often a real weak point in the management team or even the board. So it's, it's great mm. that you guys are out there providing these services. Yeah, definitely. I always find it's somewhat, it's neglected in a way. It's kind of enough, enough is good enough. Like we don't have to, you know, produce things to a, a high level. And I think that startups and SMEs really miss out on a lot of value because um, I don't really understand that you can actually get that. And there's services like ours out there that can give you that um, to help you grow your business and keep a close handle on, the economics and the finances. Yeah, and you handle both ends of the spectrum, I guess, from they can outsource you the, the bookkeeping right up to the strategic finance, even in a sense, a CFO role? Yeah, correct. So, so our, our firm, we've kind of got two divisions. So one is a business services and tax division, and you know that's run by our two experienced tax partners, and they'll do the tr- or more traditional, I'll call it, you know, income tax, FPT, you know, tax structuring, all, all that kind of stuff that, you expect an accountant to do uh, and on, on the other side of the business which is the outsource finance team uh, we've got essentially three kind of specific roles uh, which, which is a bookkeeper a manager uh, a management accountant and a cfo and they'll right. work as a team <clears throat> yep. on a shared service model for our clients and you know our clients might take all of that might have their own cfo we support that person have our own bookkeeper and we, we kind of help in a high level so yeah we, we generally work around what our client needs just to make sure they've got more of a, a full and um, a, a service and a, and a finance function that works best for their business. Yeah, great. And on the tax side, particularly for startups, there's quite a few tax incentives out there and on employee share schemes as well. Is that something you guys touch on as well? We do, yeah. So uh, employee kind of share options can be quite a specific area of tax. Um, I would call ourselves more generalist, but the ESOP kind of startup rules are, you know, we, we deal with that kind of almost on a weekly basis now because everyone's got the similar questions and they're, they're kind of straightforward once you get your head around it. Um, yeah. so, so certainly there's huge value for startups and we can certainly help with that. Yeah, I had Craig West from Succession Plus on the cast a few months ago. I don't know if you know Craig, but uh, he specialises in ESOPs and we had a good chat. Mm. But what, uh, recently we had someone speak at one of our monthly meetups here in Hobart and someone asked the question of for startups, well, sorry, the question was, are you often finding ESOPs you can replace some of a person's wage with you know the share element of an ESOP for example yeah. and uh, Rob who was speaking about it uh, said that it's more common for startups because you can conserve cash so if you need to hire mm-hmm. someone say on 150 grand a year a programmer or, or something a nerd you might say we'll give you 100 of that as wage and then 50 mm-hmm. as share options if they want to take some of that risk so there's yeah. lots of good ways you can structure um, this to pr- preserve cash and therefore equity, how much equity you need to sell off. Um, yeah, I think so all businesses, not just startups, but growing businesses should definitely be looking at ESOPs and, and making sure they've got a good financial advisor and accountant. Yeah, it's, it's important that people get that balance right so that you know, they know that early employees are investing their salary and they're getting shares for that and yep. get a good deal on that. Um, but it's not just a bonus that you get every year for being in a startup. You actually no. have to give something up yep. to, to get that. So. And any other brands or businesses you can talk about that you guys have worked with? Yeah, I mean, as a firm, we, we work with, you know, we've got more than a thousand clients. So we, we work with many different industries. We've got you know, venture capital funds. We work with in terms of their accounts, but also working with their investees. Um, you know, they'll give someone a million bucks and this person might be, you know, 25 and hasn't run business before. We will come in and help help with that, uh, help, help with that finance function. So, you know, whether it's software, e-commerce, uh, we do the doctors and dentists and, and those kind of you know, SMEs, you know, um, marketing agencies. Um, yeah, so it's, it's quite a broad a broad range of um, clients, we've got, which makes it interesting for us as accountants. You know, you don't have to, you know, work on the same old, tax return every year we've got some very uh, interesting clients who, who obviously really appreciate the work we do and we don't feel like we can add value yeah value in that relationship I was, I was going to ask if there were industries you, you uh, specialize in or focus on or, or don't work with and also location geographically is it just mm. australia yeah just, just just australia we actually have um quite a few new zealand businesses that that come to australia and we've got some good relationships with the new zealand trade an enterprise um, organization and they'll, they'll refer us these Kiwi businesses that 
need an accountant, need to explain how to set up in Australia. Uh, and that, that's that been quite quite good for us. And we've got a one of our tax partners is a Kiwi as well. So it's just yep. a, good, a good balance for us. So yeah, we're, we're Australian based, but we've certainly got some some good um, networks kind of overseas. <clears throat> Great. And with about a thousand clients, what kind of FTE team members do you have? Yeah, so we've got 20 in the yep. team. Um, you know, split fairly... I'm almost down a, a, like half in terms of tax and half in terms of outsourced finance team. We've, we've got our own team in the Philippines that do a lot of our bookkeeping and kind of data entry and they're all super qualified accountants and kind of very high, high quality work. Is that, uh, that, tw- that on top of the 20, sorry? Included in the 20. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yes. And that, that, that works very well for our, our kind of offering. Um, you know, it just gives, gives us the kind of good reckon, better economics, but also uh, you know, we can, we can, tap into a talent pool that we wouldn't have yeah. normally here. That's oh, terrific. I've got three offshore team members in the Philippines now, one in Kenya and one in Pakistan. And the Filipinos right. particularly, a tremendous work ethic. I think something like 80%, 87% of the population is Catholic. And then after mm. World War II with the American occupation, their English is superb. So their work mm. ethic is great. Their language is, is excellent. And, yep. uh, you know, they've all gone to university and the ones that do bookkeeping and accounting, obviously, have done accounting degrees. So, totally. Yeah. And the, the hours also work well. Like we have other, we, we kind of win clients from other firms and that they might be based in Serbia or wherever else. And those hours just, just they don't match up to Australia. So, it's, yep. you know, even India in some regards. But, um, yeah. you know, the Philippines is just the perfect solution for an Australian firm. And uh, before we move on, let people know how they can get in touch with you. What's the best place? Yeah, so when you can find us online at vartaldition.com.au. Um, you know, we've got lots of different kind of blogs and content there. Otherwise, you can find our content page on LinkedIn. Look at myself on LinkedIn. I'm fairly active on there as well. Um, yeah, so they can find out our details on the website. Great. We'll put those in the show notes. Perhaps outline uh, the full range of services offered by Vital Edition. Sure. So, um, so the yeah, outsource finance function. So that's the, you know, the essentially being the, the full serp could be the full service finance function for a business. So you know, a business needs bookkeeping, they need management, accounting, and reporting, and they at some point need kind of CFL or, or advisory to help them grow their business. Um, so we'll, we'll run an, uh, an engagement that's kind of more month to month, um, to month to retainer, and we'll we'll do. And it's all defined under our, our scope. We'll do the you know, books, the bank recs, the payroll, payables, receivables, um, chase debtors, et cetera. And we'll produce the monthly reports, maybe a forecast if, if that's kind of what they would like and depends what size the business is. We might sit in the board meetings. Um, you know, so it's all kind of fairly um, customised based on what yeah. our, our clients uh, need. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that seems to work well. So we've, we've some other people in the space will try and give you a, Kind of his his ten different options to choose from, and really it's all customized. Like every business yeah. is different. Every every founder and CEO has got different commercial abilities and financial abilities, and we just try and match and solve solve problems based on what what we see uh, from what we're represented. So, so for the audience listening, I guess anyone out there that they don't have strength on the team in finance, there's no one in management or on the board even mm. particularly. Um, this might be a good option for them to explore rather than trying to hire. Uh, people into this corner of the business that they themselves don't have a strong background in mm-hmm. and therefore you could you know it's a high risk of mishiring you know, getting a muppet totally. in. Um, yeah and i assume it, you guys are very flexible obviously if a business is growing and growing there's going to be a point at which it will then make sense for them to bring in-house some of those roles eventually all of them yeah totally and we, we, we've seen that happen you know we've been around for about seven years and we've had clients that have been with us from day one and they have grown from we're doing all of it because I don't want to hire a bookkeeper because, you know, that they want more kind of a higher level service than a hire a CFO because it's expensive and we'll do that. And as they grow, they can kind of pick and choose the roles they bring in house yep. and we'll just support them around that. Uh, we, we, we built our firm that we can scale as that, as those businesses scale uh, and also scale down as it, as it, as it's required. And, you know, that that's worked very well for us. Yeah, good. Clients, yeah. Great. And can you elaborate for the listeners a little on the importance of the proper management of core commercial and financial issues when growing a small business? I mean, I know this very well, but the audience, I think would be great for them to hear. Yeah, so I think that it's it's just so important to get your economics and financials right in your business. Uh, that's, the most, that's the most important foundation, really. So from the start, understanding kind of what's your margin, what's the, all your different direct costs on what you do, 
what's your cost on your marketing over what you're selling? That's yep. also very important. Uh, and also your cash flow. Are you in cash deficit all the time? Like how does that work? What kind of financing do you need around that? Um, and then also understanding, well, what, what information do I need to make sure I manage these kind of hot spots in my business? And when yep. do I need to get that? Who's the right person? How do I know it's right? Um, you know, there's, there's, there's always an element of, um, you know, you're not going to know everything in terms of finance and accounting unless you're an accountant, which is great, but you'll have to, when you start a small business, you always have to learn that because um, you can't really outsource commercial thinking. You've got to kind of have that yourself. But you also need to make sure you have the right people around you that can deliver probably what you can't or what you don't have time for just, just so you're really kind of clear on, you know, how to how can you grow your business and make sure that um, so succeeds. You, so you build, help a business build a financial model and, hand, and pick out a handful of KPIs to monitor, to look at closely? Yeah, correct. Yeah, so that it's depending on what it is, you know, we'll kind of work with them and understand. Well, how do you guys make money? Yep. Um, what are the not not just kind of I charge someone? But what are the drivers? And you know, how do you kind of go from action business initiative get a customer? How much does that cost? You know, what are you going to charge them? How often they come back? Yep. Uh, when how often do they leave? Like, is that an issue? You know, what, what are the unique economics of this business? And then we can develop a model or financial forecast around that, and then we yep. can start to track that. Know, each month as it relates kind of flows all the way down to your to your profit line on your PL. Yeah, it's really powerful. I think since you know SaaS businesses, software as a service like Zero, it's accounting software in the cloud, you don't have it on your mm. computer and it's subscription based. Since they came along, there's obviously been that big movement of um, unit economics and the, the mm. economic model for recurring or predictable revenue businesses like that. And it's mm. you know lifetime value and customer acquisition costs or the CAC, I think is really enlightening, particularly for your marketing team, obviously, because once you do the numbers, when you put a model together, this is what we think it's going to be, start tracking it and go, well, you're well off. And it actually costs mm. us $500 to secure one customer when you roll in all the costs. That can be really powerful and change the way that the business markets or investors totally. marketing mm. and even time to get a, a leading so especially mm. if a maybe b2b kind of you know software or, or kind of sales um you know how long it takes you to close a deal is actually a very important metric to track because <clears throat> yep. that'll that'll kind of dictate as to how you can use investor funds and are you actually going to be able to grow the right you, you need to based on what you promise and there's a whole you know, every part of the business can be tracked like that, especially as, but especially sales. Because uh, if you're a growth business, you need to make more revenue and you know, to be very clear of what you can and can't do. Um, so you don't put yourself in a position where you raise money and kind of grow, you know, you know, 100% every year. And then you realize that's just not physically possible to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's important to understand as a business owner. Yeah, I think it's crucial up front, particularly if you're starting out or you're about to start your real growth journey, is to get that model or the economics right so you understand it before you start tipping money into particularly marketing and, and scaling the business. Because otherwise, if, you, if you're actually losing money or making hardly any money, you're just, you're just fast-tracking implosion, basically. Totally. I, I, think it's, I think it's important that businesses know what they are. Like, are, are they a fast-growing venture capital backable business or are they a growing SME that doesn't necessarily need investor funds? It'd be nice to have it because everyone wants to have a million bucks in the bank account, but you know, is it better to grow it yourself and have a good business and a good profit um, rather than trying to go in that journey of, you know, the VC hyper growth path, which is, can be quite challenging if you're not that. You know? Yep. Be the change you want to see in your business. Become more productive and less stressed with our free Transform Your Performance online course. Once you see the benefits, put your entire team through the course at no cost. We start out by telling you the secret to guaranteed success. Then over 100 lessons help you be more focused, present, productive, and feel more in control about work. GrowASmallBusiness.com What are some of the key areas of improvement a small business might see by outsourcing its financial functions? Yeah, so the, the biggest things I can tell our clients, potential clients, is you get access to higher skill sets that you wouldn't normally be able to, to attract to your business. So, you know, <clears throat> an SME wouldn't necessarily, A, be able to afford a CFO or B, potentially not be able to attract a high quality CFO yeah. just based yeah. on, you know, the, the work that's to be done and how challenging it is, et cetera. So we have an advantage in the sense that we can attract high quality people because there's various different um you know, kind of clients and different types of industries and work and more interesting work to do. So that that's certainly important um, to understand. Um, streamlined systems and processes is is also important. Kind of one of the things that we um, 
we always bring to our new clients is, well, you know, what are you doing? How are you doing power rounds? How are you tracking things? How are you tracking, you know, leave, um, leave all, all that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, there's, you, uh, I say you'd be surprised, but when you're in a small business, if you run one, you know, it's like the last thing you worry about is, <laughs> you know, am I paying this person on time? Am I chasing their debtors? And I kind of have I put leave in? Am I tracking that? That's I've said yes to that. You know, all, all that kind of stuff. It just, you know, we make sure that we've got a really a well documented finance function that anyone can pick up and run with. Um, we're obviously running with, with it as we're kind of our client, but you know, if we whatever reason are hit by a bus, it's just all it's all there. It's yep. all there ready to go. So that's mm-hmm. just build some contingency. I think the other important important part to note is there's you know, the producing more reliable information, mm-hmm. reporting, deeper insights, greater level of transparency in the business, uh, having someone that's keeping you accountable as well, saying, Well, this isn't a good result, this 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 is a good result, and what are we gonna do with this? You know, you're kind of falling behind in your tax payments, all that kind of stuff that's really important as a small business owner because some of them can be eternal optimists and they really need a kind of uh, someone that's a bit more black and white um, which should be your accountant and we've kind of built a model where you've got the you know the, the finance function you're kind of that kind of thinking uh, on a more regular basis yeah as I, I often say to people when they're starting out their journey or the growth journey anyway find a, a terrific accountant or financial person um, hug them and never let them go because they're the ones that have got <laughs> Uh, you know, as a business owner, typically you are very bullshy and optimistic. So you got your heads through the clouds and the, that accountant or financial person should be their feet firmly planted on the ground, holding onto yours so you don't float too high through the totally. clouds. Yeah. Totally. Very important. Um, all right. Got another point there. Any- yeah, I think, yeah. So I think the last point to make around outsourcing and finance function is just a broad range of experience. Um, so we we you know, work across many different industries, solve many different commercial problems. Uh, so we can bring that experience to our clients and small business that just may not have that. So whether it's, you know, capital raising, solving a, you know, struggling business over here in this space or w- whatever it is, we've kind of been there, done that. Uh, and that can certainly add a lot of value to, to our clients. Especially if they're raising capital, whether it's bank finance or from investors, if your numbers don't line up, then you're not going to get very far at all. Yeah, absolutely. It's like what I was saying before about what kind of finance suits this business. Mm-hmm. You know, is it do we need a private investor? Is it a venture capital? Is it just we just to get a loan to do this? And why are we doing that? Yep. Are we just building a taking a loan just to you know cover losses and the business isn't growing? So it's yep. you know there's there's some important questions to answer as part of that. And what's the one thing you think small business owners do really poorly in their accounting and financial management? Yeah, I mean, before they would come to somewhere like us, I think that um, in my experience, they just don't seem to do the simple tasks often enough. So stuff like reconciling your bank account, um, you know, make sure you lodge your bags on time, all that, all that kind of simple things. Um, it always seems to be pushed, like kicked down the road because um, there's more important or more, more interesting things to do. And that just builds this kind of mound of backlog, which makes it bigger and bigger to do. And then it's just an enormous thing in the head. Like, oh, I don't have two days to do this, but if you did it half an hour every week, you just keep up with it. And at least you've got some kind of, Kind of base financial records. So I think that's <laughs> that's probably one of one of the um, kind of pieces that, that that kind of small business struggle, struggle with. And I think the other part is um, they tend to focus on the costs rather than value of a proper finance function. So mm-hmm. you know we turn into a venture client and they're kind of super focused on our cost and we're, we're not outrageously priced. It's, you know, but but it's, we're always trying to communicate. Here's all the stuff we can do for you, and if you know you just understand, understand there's actually quite a lot of value in having a, like you said, a, a good accountant or finance function for your entire journey. And uh, yep. we, we try and customize engagement. So it's, if it's a small business and they're starting out, we'll have a small engagement just so we have a touch point and say, well, we can help you build that and kind of grow that over time. And you know, yes, it's a cost, but in the same token, it's much more costly to mess that part up of your business. Yeah, I talk about it like marketing that uh, financial management's an investment. It's not a cost mm. because one, it's taking all this risk out of the business because someone's looking after the compliance. Someone is, you know, got their eye on it. Secondly, you're getting timely and accurate data, which then transforms into information that the board or the management team can make, you know, the best decisions for the business because the numbers they're looking at are accurate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> great. And professional development resources you'd recommend? 
what, one of one of my favorite books is probably more of a services type business is a book by david meister which is managing oh, professional, managing services, professional firm. services firm yeah that's um, yeah it's one of my uh it's, it's probably my number one in the professional services that was written in the early 90s i think it's a great yeah book. Mm. it's just brilliant and just talking about leverage and you know how, how that works how to kind of manage a team manage partners yeah. etc yeah you know, for, for me personally that's kind of certainly taught me a lot and i think there's a lot of value for business owners in that services space to read that uh, so i highly recommend that I, I generally always read kind of one buffett and his essays um i find there's not many people out there have a good just a good balance between investor and manager and yeah. i always find that um that warren always seems to get um, his insights really right in that. Like he's very, you know, yes, he's an investor and that's kind of his game, but he's also very attuned to the challenges of management. Um, so I always like to read, I always learn something when I read those those books. Uh, yep. And also Richard Branson, just from a back in the day, from a, you know, a kind of risk taking, you know, got to go out there and make it happen, got to hustle. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, that's quite inspiring. And you do need that as well, because you can't, you know, always can't be too serious. Sometimes you need to, Kind of you know give yourself some inspiration to go off and, and do something and build something because it's a it's a long journey it can be you know it can be tough and you need to you know make sure you, you can kind of see that it is actually possible and people have done it before and i can see this and you know i, I can do this a good book on unit economics I'm not sure if you've read it pretty predictable revenue no i haven't um, i'll shoot that I'll one through you. Yeah. but also for the tech space anyone in the tech space uh crossing the chasm have you read that one no, that's no. a great one as well. I'll, I'll shoot those through to you. But, holiday uh, reading. Yeah, 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 that's it. <clears throat> All right. Welcome well, on to our final few questions. What do you think is the hardest thing for a small business to manage financially? Uh, I, I think that I mean, most people would say cash flow. Uh, I, I agree with that. Um, I think that especially for a business that has debtors or kind of invoices based on terms, that's by far the hardest, not just in terms of tracking it, um, making sure that, the client's got the invoice. What's the process to get paid? You know, if someone doesn't pay you, how do you how do you deal with that? Like, how do you have a conversation? It can be quite confronting for small business owners to do that uh, and to manage that relationship without kind of burning a relationship. You know, that, that that is a, a challenging part of it. Uh, I think having clear information also is something that um, you know is certainly a challenge challenge for small businesses. You, you know, not having your accounts reconciled. You know, not having costs in the right period. They have a really clear view on kind of the actual cost to run the business. You know, that, that, that is certainly a challenge. And, you know, all, like I say, all this stuff can be solved with the right accountant, but that, that is, in my experience, stuff that they can struggle with. Are there any accounting or financial software systems you'd recommend to growing small business owners over others? Yeah. I mean, I think if you're not on zero, then you're, you're kind of really missing out um, I love on zero. kind of so much functionality. It's just, you know, as accountants, you know, if we were... You know, we would hire new people and some of them may not have dealt with zero yet. I'm just got no issues that they're going to pick it up within the day. Yes. It's so user-friendly from an accounting point of view and also from a business owner and client point of view. Like they, they can pull reports when they need to. They can, we can add in different you know, add-ons and receipt mm. bank and all that kind of stuff that just makes it easier and saves so much time. And saving time means you're working on your business more. Yeah. And they're investing a lot in AI at the moment as well. And it's a great testament to how good Zero is. Craig Winkler, he's a Kiwi who started Myob back in the early 80s, I think it was, 83, and really took off when GST came in in Australia. That was obviously the, the, the main uh, accounting package in Australia and New Zealand for many, many years. And then he sold out of that to five or six years ago to some investment wankers who've totally in my opinion <laughs> fucked up the business because they've taken so long to drag Myob into the cloud kicking and screaming. But Winkler then went and started pumping money into Zero. Um, he didn't found Zero, but he, you know, he's he's one of the big investors in there. Yeah, mm. yeah good on him. Yeah, great business. And what's the one thing you would say to a small business owner starting out in their growth journey on their day one? Yeah, my, my, my thoughts are I think you always got to keep in mind the bigger picture. Make sure you plan out kind of what year three and four looks like. Uh, what's the team look like? You know, how many clients you got? Where you're going to be? Um, and I think having that clear picture um, will build some resilience, which you really need resilience to, to kind of get there. It's starting a business in any context is challenging, uh, both on a personal level, uh, professional level. Uh, and, you know, you've got to really keep in mind, what are you trying to achieve? And on, on the flip side, if you're kind of reflecting on that, if things aren't working out and, you know, you, know, you kind of need to be honest with yourself around, you know, what, what did I start out to achieve here? And is it working or is it not? And, you know, continue on or, you know, try something else. Great. 
Thanks for your time today, Lachlan. I think the audience got a lot of value out of what we've gone through and uh, congratulations on your own growth journey over the last seven years and uh, in hospitality for a few years before that. Um, yeah, really appreciate you coming on the cast. Oh, thanks, Troy. Appreciate it. That's it. Thanks for listening. Please leave a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. It means more small business owners will find our cast and help people with their business growth journey.